spirituality or no spirituality, yoga or no yoga, Vedanta or no Vedanta, all the samsara that you and I, what we experience, what we are experiencing right now, we are experiencing in our minds. Do you agree? Yes. Well, you've read too much Vedanta, that's why you agree. So, <laughs> But think about it. Every experience that you have, from the beginning till now, and whatever experience we will have from now on, all our experiences are experiences in the mind. Without mind, no experience. You will say, no, there are things outside and we are experiencing them. Actually, what is happening is, when you look at the flowers there, what is happening is light falls on those flowers, and the light is reflected back to your eyes. It enters your eyes, and in the lens of the eyes, an image is formed. And see, already at this stage, what has entered into your eyes is light, not the flower. If the flower entered your eyes, then you'd be blind. <laughs> what enters our eyes are not people and uh, f flowers and trees and uh, uh, you know um, uh, cars. No, no, no. That would be a disaster. Only thing that enters our eyes is light. And then what happens? The light it, it just forms an image there, and then the image is. From there it is trans transferred to not, not light, electrical impulses in the in neurons. There are electrochemical, neurochemicals which are working and they generate little bursts of electricity between the synapses of the neurons and that is transmitted from the optic nerves to the certain centers in the brain. So when it reaches the brain, no flower, not even light, not even an image. Bursts, tiny, tiny bursts of electricity. That's what reaches the brain. And somehow from that, how we don't know. Neuroscientists also don't know. Just up to that point, they are beginning to understand a lot. But from that point onwards, it still is a mystery. How is that little bit of electricity reconstituted back into the living experience of a flower? Where? In your mind. So far, nobody in the world will dispute it. Even the most hardcore materialist reductionist will say yes this is what is happening we can't dispute that nobody says that actually a flower enters into your mind there no it is presented to your mind to your consciousness as this flower so this flower which you are seeing right now you're seeing it in your mind this flower is nothing but your mind vritti a thought in your mind all of samsara your most beloved person, the most annoying person you know, the best of experiences, the most miserable of experiences, all of them are in your mind. You say, no, they are outside and they are being represented in your mind. All right, that's a particular point, philosophical point of view. Representationism. Uh, that is one kind of philosophical point of view. But nobody will deny what you are experiencing, you are experiencing in the mind. So what is the great secret that we can learn from this? Again, not our main subject today, but worthwhile learning this. Therefore, the quality of our experience depends on the mind, not really on the world outside. The, the, our natural reaction, our natural way of trying to make our lives better is to trying to change the objective, things outside. A wiser person tries to change the subjective. Our whole perception of things and the way we understand and react to things inside the mind. One of the most beautiful things I've heard comes from a monk in the Himalayas who said, I'll tell you in Hindi and then translate into English. Shant man mein bhala samsara kaun dekha hai? Whoever has seen samsara in a peaceful mind. What is the great thing about this? Normally we think just the opposite. My mind is restless because samsara makes me restless. This monk says, you have samsara because your mind is restless. If your mind were peaceful, in the same situation, a person with peaceful mind will experience at least less suffering. 